Hey, this is Steve. I do sales and tech with Modern Driveline. This is my 86 Mustang. I grew up in Michigan where it's all about cars. And, you know, as a kid, I always wanted a 65 Mustang Fastback. That was my dream car. And um, it, it, I think the passion started way early with my dad drag racing back in the 60s. So, you know, it's kind of always been in my blood and, and it's just what I enjoy doing. I've always been into drag racing, always been into fast cars. And my very first car that I bought and went racing with was a 92 five liter Mustang that I bought brand new. The first car that I built was a 1982 uh, Mercury Capri. It had a five liter in it when I bought it and it had a four speed. And I pulled it out of a farmer's field, brought it back to my house, stripped it down, built an engine for it, built a transmission for it and a rear end and put a roll cage in it and went racing. The first races that I ran, uh, unfortunately were on the street and I uh, was in Northern California. I had a lot of fun doing that. And, but, but hitting the track for the first time was, was in Arizona, in Phoenix, Arizona, at Firebird Raceway in Arizona. So I've been racing at Firebird in Idaho since 2017, when I, I moved here in 2015, got the car ready, went out in, in the fall of 2017, ran a couple races. Uh, 2018 was into it almost all year, and so I got a couple years into it. Just getting in the car and strapping in is it, it starts the nerves as you're getting belted in, get the fire set, suit on, or fire jacket on. It really gets the nerves going and then, and then coming around and doing your burnout. And by the time you're all done with that, you're just anticipating the lights coming down. And, and I think the nerves are kind of gone by then. That, then you're thinking of cutting a good light, hitting every gear, you know, hopefully it doesn't spin and, and everything else. The, the nerves come in, I think for me earlier when we're, when I'm belting in and getting ready to go and trying to think of you know, the strategy for this run. Last year I was running a, a 302 uh, with a 3550 uh, Tremec transmission in it. This year I'm going with a dark block 363 cubic inch uh, with twisted wedge aluminum heads that have been fully ported and polished, a solid roller cam, and uh, a, a larger shot of nitrous on top of it. So that necessitated having the TKX with the, the more RPM capability. I decided to go with the TKX in this car uh, because I didn't really want a six-speed. I don't need that uh, yet. And, and it was fitting in the car was easier. <clears throat> I'm looking for lightweight in this car, and that was a big reason not to have the, uh, the six-speed. And to go with the five-speed, I need something that's capable to handle the power that I'm going to have. And the TKX was just a natural for that. I had a Tremec 3550 before. <clears throat> it had a very low first gear, was not set up for what I'm trying to do. And so with the TKX, I'm hoping with a higher first gear, we can get out of the hole a little better and not have to shift from first to second before the 60 foot time. I'm also, since I'm building a new motor for the car, which has some more RPM capability, I'm looking for the uh, 7,500 RPM and, and above shift capability that the last transmission did not have. So the first part we've got here is a lightened aluminum flywheel. So aluminum flywheels are good for for a lot of kinds of racing with with what I'm going to be doing on aluminum flywheel is good. This is really isn't good for the street, but for what I'm going to do with the kind of horsepower I've got, that's going to work for me. Got an Ace Racing twin disc clutch. This is going to hold the horsepower that I plan on putting out and I plan on on the nitrous being somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 and 750. <clears throat> so we went with a, an Ace Racing twin disc clutch. And then to top that off for the speeds we plan on running. We're going to put a quick time SFI approved bell housing on it. Since this car had a Tremec transmission in it before, a Tremec 3550, I didn't need a whole lot of the stuff that a normal guy would need in a package for, say, an automatic car or if it had a T5 in it before. So I did get a, a pretty good amount of parts and all the big parts, but I didn't have to have a full package. 
far to putting the package together, uh, I put most of it together. I did work with Bruce, the owner of the company, on it uh, for a couple of small details of things that that I didn't know 100%, which typically like the twin disc clutch. I didn't know a whole lot about that, and I didn't know if it would work best for me. And um, and that's that's what he helped me with, and it's made a big difference in the car. Something I wanted to do was build a, a 363 small block for the car. And doing that, going from a 302 to a 363, that necessitated um, stepping up gear ratios in the transmission for the extra horsepower. Now I was running a, a Tremec 3550 before that with a 327 first gear, and I've got a 410 rear gear, and that made it so I was shifting before the 60 foot mark, <clears throat> which was hurting my 60 foot times. So one of the reasons I wanted to get into the TKX was for the 287 first gear, and that it's a stronger transmission to handle the extra power. Close ratio to get me down the track, so I think all in all it's really just a a combination of parts why I wanted to do this and not just because the TKX is the newest and greatest thing there was reasons I wanted to do and that's one of them is is the extra torque handling power the difference in first gear just how it's going to work with my rear gears and the the ability to hold the extra horsepower of the, of the new engine so the process to put this together uh, for me in a, in a combination starts way before even transmission it started with the engine and what I wanted to do there and then that necessi necessitates changes down the line of what you're going to do the flywheel I'm going to run the clutch I'm going to run then the transmission and and the uh, the output shaft of the transmission for the yoke for the drive shaft that I that I'm going to use and and all that it just comes kind of comes in as a as a package deal so <clears throat> it started with the engine and then went to the transmission and what I wanted to do and it was it's about drag racing for me I don't really care about the the fifth gear overdrive because for me it's first through fourth gear and what I want to do with it, how I'm going to use it, and the torque uh, carrying capability of the transmission. Since I am running a 363 and I will be running nitrous on top of that, I needed that extra strength for what I was doing. So my expectations of the TKX is better shifting, uh, a little better first gear, so I so I don't have to shift a second before the 60 foot time. So that means I'm going to get better 60 foot times in the car, and with a closer gear ratio than I did have in my last transmission, I should get a little uh, better elapsed time. My overall experience for installing the the transmission is uh, I've I've done this many times. I've been in Fox bodies since they were new is when I was working on them. So. Surprisingly, it went in easier and it fits better than my than my 3550, which is basically all the TKO guys out there. There's no beating up of the tunnel. My exhaust fits better, and I had ready-made exhaust already. The exhaust fits better. The cross member that I've got, which is the the one that we promote for this, the Stifler's cross member. I've already had one of those. It fits much better with the TKX. There's room all the way around. I can stick my hand all the way around between the transmission and the tunnel, and everything really slipped in much easier than I thought it would, much easier than it would with a TKO. One of the changes that I needed to make was the slip yoke in the drive shaft. For any of the T5 guys or, or the early 3550 guys, the TKX is a 31 spline output. So I had to buy a yoke, and it was very easy to just change it out on the drive shaft that I had. It, it didn't change the length here. On some vehicles it does change the length, on the Fox body it does not if you've got a good uh, motorsport drive shaft. That's what I did, just changed out the front yoke, everything slipped back in, fit perfect. I think maybe the biggest difference for this installation, as compared to some of the other ones I've done, is, is the ease of fitment, how much room there was inside there. Since the TKX has such a small, slim case, that there really wasn't any clearance problems, there wasn't much that I had to deal with in, 
in header clearance, in cross member clearance, in anything. Everything just, just went right in and fit just the way they, they said it should. And you can tell by looking at it, it's a nice slim case, but once you get it in the car, you can really see how, how slim it is. So to any other Fox body guys out there wanting to do this, I will say that it is uh, a worthwhile um, change. Whether you're a T5 guy and you're, and you're going through T5s and, and wrecking them, I've been there, I've done that. Or a 3550 or even a TKO guy that wants some higher RPM shifting or, or any, for any of those reasons, that would be a great reason to put a TKX in. They fit great, they fit better than the TKOs. Uh, more holding power and just just a better all-around shift feel. So my feedback after the first drive and, and I didn't really take it out on the road too much because this is a, a full drag car with no plates or anything on it but I did take it around my neighborhood and I will say that uh, shifting is smooth first to second and second to third just super smooth smoother than a than a TKO or even anything before that it feels like a T5 as far as the shifting goes uh, twin disc clutch so far is excellent and the truth is really in when it gets on the on the drag strip and see what happens there when I really start getting on it and shifting fast and how it goes but from what I've uh, seen so far it is excellent.